Hi, I'm Phil, Horticultural Manager of Manx National Heritage. I'm working with volunteers helping to create gardens at heritage sites on the Isle of Man. Today, I'm going to give a brief introduction into naturalistic planting design. A naturalistic planting design is a low maintenance style with a long season of interest. You can use native species or more typical garden plants and the planting can be adapted to any size garden in sun or part shade. And no artificial fertilisers, manure or compost are added to the soil. Instead, plants are chosen to work with the conditions that are naturally present on site. By planting a wide variety of species, the planting can self-adapt to changing site conditions such as the amount of sun and shade as the surrounding trees get larger. Um, for one example here, we've got quite a large tree here and here and down here you can see um, seedlings of Primula vulgaris um, which prefer shady conditions. So you can see how the planting is moving itself about and the plants are in a way reciting themselves to where they want to be. We work with the concept of phenology. This describes the seasonal changes on a plant's life cycle over a year, when it grows, flowers and what happens after flowering. So for example, the, these Primula vulgaris flower in sort of April time, but then later on in the season, the other plants grow up and submerge them and they go dormant until next year when they grow again. The planting is layered, starting with short-growing, shade-tolerant, spring-flowering species. Taller species are selected for summer flowering and taller still for autumn, each progressive layer submerging the earlier flowering species. The example I'm going to talk about is for a moist, productive soil, as we have at Russian Abbey. Divide the planting space into one metre squares. We will randomly distribute our chosen nine plants into each square metre. We start with the shade tolerant spring base layer. In addition to lovely spring flowers, this is an important functional layer in that it shades the soil preventing weeds from germinating, a bit like a green mulch. These plants flower early, so they tend to be small. We will need five plants. Two Primula vulgaris, one Primula veris, one Ajuga reptans, one geum. Next, we choose a summer species, one early, one mid, and one late flowering. So for this, we're going to plant one Veronicastrum vergatum, one Lithrum vergatum, one Succissa pretensis. Finally, we choose one autumn flowering species, one Rubecchia subtomentosa. We've created a diverse meadow-like mix using clump forming plants, particularly where the flowers are held up high on leafless stems, so the plant doesn't shade the lower growing spring flowering layer too much. The choice of species to use should work with site and climatic conditions. So for example, this Veronicastrum tends to grow straight up in quite a narrow clump and doesn't shade out the lower ground species too much. So another example is this lovely great burnet, Sanguisorba, here. And you can see how these, these flower stems that don't have leaves on them, they get taller and taller, so the lower foliage doesn't cast too much shade because the flowering stems are held high in the air. We've used a variety of different flower forms, such as buttons, umbels, spires and daisies to attract a wide variety of different pollinating insects. As in this example, pick species that will coexist together to form a plant community. Don't pick aggressive spreading plants that will dominate the planting and reduce biodiversity. The selected species should be robust and not require staking or plant supports to stop them from flopping over. This seeded mix example uses the same principles of design, but at much higher density of plants, which reduces opportunities for weeds to establish in the planting. Thank you.